listen to what Jordan Peterson is saying. He's saying universities are dominated by the left. Now for him, the left is anybody to the left of Attila the Hun. In fact, universities are dominated by the right. He's so far on the right that that looks like the left to him. When you refer to intellectuals in intellectuals in society, whom do you mean? I mean people whose end products are ideas. Uh, there are other people, people with great uh, intelligence whose end products are things like the soft vaccine. Uh, there are a research scientist is not necessarily an intellectual. That's right. He, he, an engineer isn't necessarily right. an intellectual. That's right. Because the, the engineer is, is judged by uh, the end product, uh, which is not simply ideas. If he builds a building that collapses, it doesn't matter how brilliant his, his idea was, uh, he's ruined. Uh, conversely, if an intellectual who's brilliant has an, has an idea to, for rearranging society, and that ends in disaster, he pays no price at all. A classic example was the era between the two world wars, where the intellectuals were all in favor of disarmament, even while Hitler was arming Germany and when Japan was arming and so forth, they were saying we should disband the RAF, the British, some, the British intellectuals, and so on. And it was not that they convinced the holders of power the holders of power, power understood that Germany was rearming secretly even before Hitler took power. You make this point, Stanley Baldwin, then the British Prime Minister, yes. saw what Hitler was up to. Oh, yeah, the, the British and French intelligence services both knew this. The public didn't know this. And Baldwin was not about to tell the British public that the, uh, Germany was rearming because the clear implication was that Britain must re rearm. And the uh, intellectuals had made rearmament, uh, you know, poison politically. And his professional opinion as a, as a working politician was that the climate of opinion was such that, the, that British, British democracy couldn't bear the truth. That's right. Because of what the intellectuals had done to the, yes. the, through the journals and newspapers and the, the chattering classes, so to yes. speak. And what about Vietnam? Lyndon oh, Johnson. Good. Oh, my gosh. That, uh, the Tet Offensive was hailed by the uh, intellectuals as a, as, a, as a huge defeat for the American military forces. After the communists took over, won the war, took, took, over, took over South Vietnam. Tet Offensive is 68. The communists finally win in 73. Yeah. Uh, the, the communist leaders themselves said they were devastated by the Tet Offensive. They never won a military battle against American forces the whole time the Vietnam War went on. But in the newspapers, the, the, the Tet Offensive was uh, depicted as a great defeat for the United States. So Lyndon Johnson and the military conducting the war in Vietnam knew that we had, in effect, that we had won, not in effect won, that we had won that engagement, the Tet Offensive. Oh, and, and the communists knew. Everybody knew except every, the intellectuals. Everybody. And Lyndon Johnson, instead of prosecuting the war, is forced to announce toward the end of 1968 that he is not going to run for re-election, that's the moment when America effectively surrenders in Vietnam. Yes. Because the climate of opinion got, the, it, because the intellectuals got things wrong. They, they dominated the climate of opinion. And if, if uh, in a democracy, if the people believe the war is unwinnable, then it's unwinnable. So while we're on the subject of MIT, you yeah. reference Chomsky a lot when you're uh, in your linguistic stuff. Yes. Um, you, you must have been colleagues there then for... for Not in the same time. department because he was in linguistics and I was in cognitive science, but certainly colleagues at the same uh, institute, yeah. And for people that don't know much about Chomsky, how, who, can you give a bio for him or could you tell a little bit about... Him. Well, he is, he is famous for two reasons. One of them is his political activism. He is a uh, very vociferous critic of American and British foreign policy. He is a, a leftist, but not Marxist. He's a, he calls himself an anarcho-syndicalist, wow. which is a kind of anarchist, uh, anarchist of the left. There's also a right-wing anarchist movement, kind of more libertarian. Uh, objectivist Ayn Rand uh, style, but he is more of a communitarian, uh, libertarian anarchist. Uh, but anyway, a fierce critic of Israel, of Britain, of the U.S., uh, and, and an early critic of the Vietnam War. Uh, and he has a huge following because of his prolific output in politics. I mean, probably more than, than 100 books. He's on the... Uh, 
the Rage Against the Machine cites him in their liner notes. I think Chumbawamba <laughs> had one of his lectures on the, the B side of one of their, uh, their their records when they used to be records. But then he is also famous for having really founded the modern approach to linguistics, starting in the 1950s when he was uh, just in his 20s. He pretty much revolutionized the field. He uh, polarized the field. Most people in linguistics are either uh, rapidly uh, in favor of his theories or determined to bring him down, not an entirely healthy state of affairs. So a polarizing figure in linguistics as he is in politics. But in linguistics, he was the first to give linguistics a, uh, a psychological spin, saying that the, the problem of uh, the study of language is really a problem of how human children acquire language, which they do without any lessons or, or instruction or not much in the way of feedback. Uh, this, to him, suggested that human children are born with a... Uh, uh, circuitry in the brain that is specialized for acquiring language uh, by noting that language is not just a list of sentences. Uh, every sentence that we're uttering uh, is probably uttered for the first time in the history of the, the universe, but we nonetheless can produce and understand sentences fluently. That means that there must be something in the brain uh, that is a, an algorithm or a, a, a recipe for generating and interpreting sentences rather than a memorized list. And that this changed the whole uh, mission statement for linguistics. It wasn't just listing a bunch of constructions, but rather uh, it was what is the uh, mental software that allows us to use language and, the me and, and prior to that, the mental software that allows us to acquire language. Also, he... Uh, argued that all languages conform to a universal plan, what he called a universal grammar, which uh, he then related to the uh, hypothetical innate circuitry with which children acquire language, that that's where language universals come from. They come from the human brain. So whenever you have a theory that is so identified with one individual, whether it be Freud or Piaget or any big theorist, uh, it, it's never exactly the truth because it, it, this is all bigger than any of us. And uh, uh, a field that is too uh, oriented either for or pro or con one person's ideas, I think is, gonna, is somewhat distorted. And why is it that intellectuals, that is to say people whose end product is ideas, should succumb to that temptation more than, to use your example, a chess grandmaster? Because a, a chess grandmaster can be world famous for doing absolutely nothing more than winning chess tournaments and making displays, as many of them do, of playing uh, five chess games uh, simultaneously while blindfolded. But intellectuals, what? They, they, well, it, they, it, la it, they languish it, we, in obscurity? For, no matter well, how smart. well, the whole question of uh, when is someone well known or not? Uh, came up during the visit of Jim, uh, Jim Flynn from uh, uh, New Zealand here a few years ago. He's one of the world's authorities on IQ tests. Mm -hmm. uh, people, you know, in India know about Jim Flynn. People in England, he, was going, he made a world tour. Uh, but I doubt if the people in the next block from where he lives knows who he, know, know who he is. If, if, if Nam Chomsky had just kept on stating in linguistics, Neither of us probably would have ever heard of Noam Chomsky. He would have been just as famous around the world among linguists, but nobody else would have heard of him.